In chapter four, we introduced the concept of transfer functions, which are Laplace domain relationships between model inputs and model outputs. In chapter four, the emphasis was not on the particular chemical and physical processes being described by the transfer functions, but rather on the mathematical structure of the transfer function itself. In chapter five, we're going to unpack this idea of transfer functions in more detail to see how the outputs of these transfer functions respond to different common types of model inputs. This slide summarizes the th process examples from chapter four that we looked at to introduce three common types of transfer functions, integrators, first order transfer functions, and second order transfer functions. These are the types of animals that we have in our transfer function zoo. In chapter five, we're going to feed these transfer functions five different types of inputs, a step input, a ramp input, a pulse input, a sinusoidal input, and an impulse input. These five different types of inputs represent important idealized features of real signals in chemical and biological processes. By understanding how each type of transfer function responds to these different types of inputs, we'll gain deeper insight into the behavior of chemical and biological processes described by transfer functions. To do this, we need to be able to write each of these model inputs in both the time domain and the Laplace domain. We've already seen the step function, which takes a constant value for t greater than zero in the time domain, and in the Laplace domain is represented by m over s, where m is the magnitude or the height of the step. The Laplace transform of a linear ramp function is a over s squared. In chapter three, we also looked at the rectangular pulse function, which takes a value with a magnitude m between t equals zero and tw, where tw represents the width of the pulse and a value of zero for t greater than tw. We've already seen the Laplace transform of this function, which can be represented as two steps of opposite magnitude separated in time by a time delay tw. In chapter three, we also looked at the Laplace transforms of trigonometric functions and the Dirac delta function, which are used to model sinusoids and impulses respectively. Now let's feed some of these inputs to the animals in our transfer function zoo and see what the transfer functions poop out. We'll begin with the integrator transfer function and let's feed it a step input. We'll represent each of the inputs with the function u and each of the outputs with the function y. When the integrator with magnitude k is fed the step input of magnitude m, we can find that the output in the Laplace domain is mk over s squared. You'll recognize this reciprocal s squared functionality as a ramp in the time domain. That is, in the time domain, y linearly increases with time with a slope mk, where m is the magnitude of the step and k is the gain of the integrator transfer function. The step input to an integrator does not reach a new steady state it continuously increases with time. Now, why is this transfer function called an integrator again? Well, remember it's called an integrator because multiplying by one over s in the Laplace domain is the equivalent of taking the integral in the time domain. So this output in the time domain represents the integral of this step input in the time domain. Next, let's feed the step input to a first order process. The step input has the same function that we looked at on the previous slide, m over s, and our first order transfer function is represented by a gain divided by tau s plus one. Multiplying these two together to obtain the output, we find that the output is mk over s times tau s plus one. Using table 3.1, we can invert this output back to the time domain, and we find a function that exponentially decays to a new steady state. Here, the output is d-dimensionalized. Notice that the y-axis is scaled as y over km and the time axis is scaled as t over tau. So the curve you see here is a master curve describing all such exponential decays that are described by this equation. All step inputs to first order processes result in an exponential decay to a final steady state with a normalized value of one. And because these are exponentials, in one time constant, tau, they should reach 63% of the final steady state. You know that exponential decays reach about 85% of their final steady state 
in 2 tau, 95% of their final steady state after 3 tau, and over 99% of the final steady state after 5 tau. Next, how about a ramp input to a first order process? The ramp Fun the ramp function in the time domain is represented by a over s squared in the Laplace domain, where a is the slope of the ramp. Our first order process has the same transfer function that we had on the previous slide. When we multiply these two together to get the output, we get a k over s squared times tau s plus 1. Now when we do the partial fraction expansion, we should have three linearly independent terms. How will this behave in the time domain? The first term inverts to the time domain as an exponential decay. The second term inverts to the time domain as a step. And the third term inverts to the time domain as a ramp. So this is the sum of an exponential decay, a step, and a ramp. Will the sum of an exponential decay, a step, and a ramp lead to a new steady state in the time domain? It cannot because it has a term in it represented by a ramp function. That ramp function continuously increases with time. That makes sense because our input is also continuously increasing with time. This figure shows the input function, normalized by a, plotted along with the corresponding output function, normalized by ka. And again, the x-axis is normalized by tau. This figure from our text is a little bit deceptive in that it appears that these two have the same slope. But remember that the input and output will have different slopes. The input function has a slope of a, and the output function has a slope of ka. Here, they're just shown normalized by different amounts. The output function exponentially approaches a line with a slope ka. And the exponential decay associated with that approach to the ramp has a time constant tau. When we feed a sinusoidal input to a first order transfer function, we obtain an output that has three terms in the partial fraction expansion, multiplied by this magnitude, ka over omega squared tau 1 squared plus 1, where a and omega are the amplitude and frequency of the sine function. Inverting this function back to the time domain gives a weighted sum of sine and cosine functions with an exponential decay. So this exponentially decays to a phase shifted sine wave. How do the frequency and amplitude of the input function compare to the frequency and amplitude of the output function? Next, consider the impulse input to the first order transfer function. The impulse input in the Laplace domain is a constant a. So the output is just a k over tau s plus 1. We already saw what this looks like in the time domain in example 3.6 at the end of chapter 3. This is an exponential decay with a magnitude a k and a time constant tau. Does the impulse input to the first order transfer function result in a new steady state? And if so, how is that new steady state related to the old steady state? In the next video, we'll feed some of these same inputs to second order transfer functions.